Let's start talking first, though, about replication. One of the things that happens automatically when you have Active Directory is that all the Active Directory servers replicate with each other because they all share the exact same information. This is different than it was many, many years ago. For example, an NT351, NT40, in the early systems, you had a primary domain controller and then you had backup domain controllers. And what would happen is the primary would control all the information and the backup was there more or less for load balancing. That's changed. Everything today, okay, everything today, all domain controllers have the exact same information. There is no primary, there is no backup. They're all the same. Now again, you may have a couple uh, DCs that have additional roles, all right, like the schema master, that kind of stuff. But when it comes to Active Directory itself, all of the domain controllers are exactly the same. And to do that, they have to replicate. Now, when we talk about replication, there are two types of replication that we can deal with. You can deal with inner site replication and intra site replication. So let's explain those for a second. What happens is, let's say that I have a couple sites. Okay, site A, site B, and site C. All right, and in each site, I have three domain controllers in every one. Okay, the little squares are obviously domain controllers. Okay, so what happens is when these sites go to replicate with each other, the first thing that happens is all of the domain controllers replicate with each other first. This is called intra-site replication. Then, after all of the internal domain controllers have replicated with each other, then inter-site replication then happens. So the first thing that happens is all of the internal domain controllers have to have the same information. After all the internal domain controllers have the same information, then replication between the two sites takes, takes effect. All right? Now, the way this works, okay, the way this works is there's a little number that is actually planted in every site. That is called the KCC, the Knowledge Consistency Checker. And what this number is, is this is a number that each site has. So, for example, A might have a number right now of 310. B has a number of 480, and C has a number of 125, okay? What ends up happening is when these sites talk to each other, when A talks to B, it says, hey, B, I got you down for 480. B says, yep, that's my number. B says, hey, I got you down for 295. A says, no, wait a minute. I'm at 310. And what happens is, there now needs to be changes that get sent from site A down to site B. After the actual changes are done, B will change its number and then know that A is now at 310. And the way, believe it or not, it's as simple as that. The way they all know if they have the right information or not is do they have the right number. If B goes to C and it says, hey, I got you down for 125 and C says, yep. And C says, hey, I got you down for 450. B says, no, wait a minute, I'm currently at 480. We now know that changes need to replicate. And it's as simple as that. They literally just use a number system. And as long as the numbers match, we know that all of the information is accurate. If the numbers don't match, then we know that the sites need to, to update with each other. And it's as simple as this. Now, when you set up your replication, intra-site and inter-site replication, 
what happens is when you build your sites, you can go into Active Directory Sites and Services, and inside of Active Directory Sites and Services, you can state who the primary communication server is. All right, so let's say again, let's go back to where we had our three DCs. And we have three over here. This started with Exchange. And then Microsoft liked it so much, they moved it into the networking side of the house. Okay? When these sites talk to each other, when one server needs to talk to another, the last thing you want is all these servers just communicating with all the other servers on the network. This causes a lot of traffic. And before you know it, your line, your internet line here, is literally eaten up because all the servers want to communicate and they're all trying to communicate to the other site. So what happens is when you build sites, you can set up a thing called a bridgehead server. And what the bridgehead server is, is it's the actual server that's going to talk to the other sites. So, for example, if I make this one here my bridgehead and I make this one here my bridgehead, all of the sites are going to use that bridgehead to communicate to the other site. They're going to go through those two boxes to talk to each other, and only those two boxes. Now, when you have more than one site, if you want other servers to talk to that site, you don't have to make every bridgehead server the same. For example, between link A, it's these two. Between link C, it could be this one here and this one here. When you set up the link between the sites, you choose each bridgehead for each link. So every link can have completely different servers as the bridgehead. So this is the way that sites communicate with each other. Bridgehead servers started with Exchange. Microsoft originally started putting them out with Exchange servers because they didn't want all the Exchange servers just talking to each other. They want to be able to use one box that can communicate to your other sites. Well, it worked out so well and it stopped so much of this replication traffic that Microsoft said, hey, you know what? We ought to do the same thing in Active Directory. And they've moved bridgehead servers over into Active Directory now. That started with 2008. Okay? And then I, I believe that you can even do it in 2003. When 2008 released it, they liked it so much they put a patch out for 2003 so that when you set up sites in 2003, you could set up bridgehead servers. All right, so this is how communications work. So you have your intra-site replication. This means that all of the servers are going to communicate with each other within the their own site first. Intra-site replication it happens like password changes. Uh, you know, if it's two servers are trying to update with each other, and they're not exactly the same, replication, conflicts. Everything usually goes by timestamps. That's why it says the latest version wins, because it's timestamps. The last one to make a change is going to be the change that the system's going to listen to. So this site actually, this site actually is going to replicate, and then it's going to send its information through the bridgehead out to the other sites. Now, there may be times when you think that your replication is having a problem. And you say, hey, wait a minute. I don't know if my replication is happening properly between my servers. There are some tools that you can use. The main tool that we use for replication is a tool called Rep Admin. You have other ones, DC Diag, that's Domain Controller Diag uh, Diagnostics. You can use PowerShell commands, but rep admin is the number one tool that most of us use when you want to see replication. And it's a very, very easy command. All you do 
is go out to PowerShell, type in rep admin slash, and then what you're trying to see. For example, show REPL, and then you put in the name of the domain controller, and it'll show you all your replication for that domain controller. All right, you can also do that by saying show CONN, which will also show information for a domain controller. You can say rep admin KCC to take a look at the KCC numbers. So there's all kinds of different rep admin commands that you can use so that you can see connection objects, you can see replication partners, you can see all the information you need to see about replication.